Good evening, everybody. How are we all doing? Welcome. Do apologize about the uh, the late start. Had some technical issues, had some Runa issues, and uh, yeah, but we're here. It's Sunday. And look at Phil, he's getting fancy with his with his background. Look at this. Look at this. Looking good. Phil, can we can I hear you? Am I, are you in the can I hear you? Hang on a second. <laughs> Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. It's fine. We're good. I'm just having. I'm now. I'm now. Yeah. I'm now having a panic. You're a little. You've we've got a little bit of a delay um, between the two of us, as usual, Phil. But we'll just power through that. Um, 112 people out the gate. How are you all doing, McGabby, Heath? What's happening, Roy? Fapnado, Asha, Rainy, Donna. What is happening, Kelly? Potato, Angela, Scottish Lass, Amanda. How are you all? I hope you're all having a good day. Um, yeah. So, how are you on this fine day, Phil? How are you? How are you doing, Ron? I'm good. Can you hear me? What's going on? I'm good. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, we, are, we're, 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 we kind of have a slow connection back and forth, but yeah. Yeah, let me see if I can uh, <clears throat> figure out why I'm that. I, I really don't like Zoom. I don't like Zoom either. It's a fucking pain in my balls. It's a, it's a combination of Zoom and my internet sucks. Yeah, I'm 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 just gonna continue to hate on Zoom because uh, yeah. yeah yeah it it thinks it, it as soon as lockdown happened and the pandemic happened it's just it just thinks it's king of the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, Streamyard Streamyard um, sadly doesn't run through OBS. Streamyards for people that can't use OBS, if you see what I mean. Um, so we're just using Zoom as our camera yeah. ports, effectively. Uh, but we'll get there. We'll get there. There's other broadcasting software out there that I'm looking into that mm -hmm. uh, pipes the the cameras in, basically. That's a lot yep. better. So this evening, again, it is Serial Sundays. On you go, Phil. We're going to be on. 90 minutes tonight so we're gonna be in 90 minutes yep uh till about six o'clock eastern standard usa i guess that's gonna put you uk people on at 11 o'clock yeah roundabout roundabout so what's up uk what's up usa what's up canada if you, let us know where you're from drop your country in the link we're gonna be talking about charles albright tonight charles albright is uh he's known as the eyeball killer and the Dallas Ripper. <laughs> the the eyeball very, killer. Very, uh, Damn. Yeah. That's, that's got to be up there in top 10 yeah. creepiest yeah. serial killer names. The eyeball killer. That that's, is ominous. That's up there. Yeah. Up there. Yeah. Because I wouldn't want to so be... Because I wouldn't want to be killed by having my eyeballs ripped out, nor would I want to be beaten to death with eyeballs. Oh! The realness! Oh, yeah, that's, Phil. That's... A, that's, that's that's the victim with uh, her eyes missing. So, yeah, we're going to talk about him tonight. But we are going to take all of your questions and yes. uh, all of your comments. And, Ron, I can't see the questions and comments. You're going to have to relay those to yeah, me. Yeah, I will do my best. And um, I want to just show a little love real quick. Um, one of my wife's former students, his name is Alex Durbin, Alexander Durbin. He's got this really cool company, the shirt company. Check this out. He sent me the sweatshirt with the Sweet. beetle on it. And um, Alex Alexander Durbin Designs, and he's in San Francisco. And uh, my wife went to school with his parents, and he was one of her students. And he moved out to California, California and started a shirt company, or, or I should say a clothing company. And he sent me a really nice pair of sweats and a, a sweatshirt. The Beetle represents resilience in the time of struggle. The coolest thing about this, and the reason I'm wearing this tonight, is he donates um, a portion of the proceeds, 10% of all the proceeds go to a shelter uh, for women and children. So alexanderdurbin.com. It's the uh, Oakland. Young Missouri kid, yeah. make, Missouri the, kid making, a, making a name for himself in California. Yeah, the Oakland Elizabeth House is where 10% of all profits in 2020 were donated uh, to residents of women and children yes. who have experienced poverty of homelessness, exactly. violence, and addiction. Isn't that cool? Very cool. Very reasonably priced uh, stuff as well. 35 bucks for a, for a t-shirt. It's absolutely spot on. Uh, it looks nice. Looks good. I'm down with it. I'm going to post a link uh, to Alexander Durbin for you all, and I'll make sure it's in the description as well. So there we go. Awesome. Um, our, our connection's shaky, but let's uh, let's let's see what the people are talking about. And um, yeah, I'm, I want to uh, say 
next week we're going to be on here again live uh to be the, the the last one uh next week live same time we're going to be talking about the cleveland strangler anthony Sowell, who just died in prison on death row uh i've talked to him and i've also talked to albright albright has sent me letters and uh it's it's a rare one if you know anything about albright not many people have talked to charles albright he's still alive he's what is he, 87 years old? Damn. And uh, he won't be around much longer, but uh, we did get to talk. We talked to the eyeball killer, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm. Um, yeah, like the, the eyeball killer, like I say, it's, it's, it's an ominous, it's an ominous sounding uh, serial killer name. Yeah. And there's always something really weird when, you know, when a serial killer does anything other than just you know, kill for his satisfaction, removing eyes or cutting off limbs and, and all that yep. stuff. It really, it takes it to the next level of creepy for me. Because it's kind of like, you know, especially if it happens after you're dead, it's like this, the, the weird thought of what somebody would do to you uh, mm -hmm. when you're gone. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's creepy. Yeah. Right, right. It's one of the most unique cases uh, i tried to pick some really neat cases this month when we do these lives um this one is always it's it's the guy that cuts off the feet and the guy that rips out the eyes he doesn't rip out the eyes he cuts the eyes meticulously cuts the eyeballs out in fact they can't even tell the eyeball moved until they go to the more open the lids and they're gone Okay, uh, I think we're maybe just be stuck on Phil for you, a second there. I think, you yeah, you're cut. You're cutting in and out, Phil. I don't know if it's Zoom, um, no. or you know if, what I'm gonna do. Wait, what, what if I switch? I have I have two different internets. Yeah. What if I switch to another internet? Yeah, give that a try. Go and give that a try. I'll yeah. hold down the fort while you do that, mate. No problem. Just, yeah, just, yeah. You just, talk. I'll drop yeah. off a Zoom. Yeah, and try yeah, yeah. That. No problem, mate. No Let problem. Me All right, no problem. I'll try. All right, so. Yeah, next next one is uh, next Sunday is the last in our uh, serial Sundays with Phil. Uh, I imagine we'll be making a new plan. I don't think uh, any of you have to panic, just so you know, um, because if Phil thinks this is the end of his live streaming, he wrong. Uh, but really cool. I mean, that Alexander Durbin uh, that Phil was just talking about looks pretty good. I uh, have to say. And it's been a it's been an interesting day here in uh, Swanson Land. There's a lot of stuff in the works right now, like a lot of stuff, and um, we shall be telling you all about it soon. And there's a lot more coming with Phil, so don't worry, don't worry. Look at you all, no, no. You don't need your eyeballs once you're dead. I know that, but they're still my eyeballs. Like, hello, do you know what I'm saying? They're still my eyeballs, and I'd like to keep them if that's all right. If you don't mind. He can't stop loving this. Yeah, well, don't worry. We've got, we've got, we've got plans. You don't all have to worry. Don't worry. Um, so let me just see if I'm missing letting Phil back in as well. I think we're okay. Uh, oh, yeah, we've got an interview with a serial killer going up tomorrow. I'll just get you the name. Hang on a second. It is Terry, yeah, Terry Blair is uh, the serial killer that we've got the interview going up with tomorrow. Um, this guy here. Uh, Terry Blair, um, convicted of killing seven women in Kansas City, Missouri, though investigators believe it may have been additional unidentified victims. So you have a live interview with them tomorrow exciting stuff all right phil is back all right i'm back i'm back i'm back i'm back i think i might have a better yeah i i, I keep getting to switch over to my other my other internet i think this will be better yeah not using the one from 1992 is definitely the right way okay definitely the right <laughs> um so I, I, 
not frozen now, so hopefully I'm not frozen. Just, just so you know, you have devastated. Everyone is devastated in the side chat that next week is the last week. I've told them just to relax, and there'll be oh, more to come. Hey, okay. They've just to relax, okay? They're just to relax. Um, we'll take a break and come back and do one a month or something like that. It's, honestly, this is this is this is what he thinks the plan is. One a month is crazy. <laughs> he's fucking mad. He's mad. I don't think I don't think he understands. Um, so this is we're about to hit like uh next week will be the channel have been up for a month we'll be able to assess the analytics we'll see what works uh, and we'll just be continuing to roll that out um there'll also be the new membership that'll be coming up and a whole bunch of other things that uh, you can you know get involved and get a little bit extra out of so there's loads to come there's loads to come and yeah, we want to thank everybody for yeah. subscribing yeah. we're almost at four thousand subscribers yeah. Descriptions, and that's pretty damn good um two weeks in so uh, yeah. almost three weeks we're excited yeah i'm excited too and like i say summer and uh, we're, we're about to come out of the dark months so there's a lot more to come so don't worry it's not the end of phil okay it's definitely going to be more than once a month. I'm, I hate to break it to Phil, <laughs> but, and uh, we'll be we'll be we'll be cracking it out. But listen, this is definitely the right connection to be using, Phil. The one that you're using now. Good, good, good. We'll make sure we stay on this. Yeah, absolutely. So let's take some questions, and then I'm going to okay. dive into Charles Albright, the eyeball killer, the okay. Dallas Ripper, the Dallas Ripper, Charles Albright. Still alive today. We have spoken to him. Yeah. He has sent me letters. Um, I have spoken to him on the phone, Mr. Charles Albright. And um, I've got some really cool stuff he sent me. He sent me this long, uh, multiple page thing about how he's innocent. I'm going to, what I usually do, in case you guys don't know this, after each live stream, after each video I post, all of the papers that I hold up in the video, I scan and put in my Patreon. So for 10 bucks a month, you support my work, which is really appreciated. And you get copies of all this stuff. So you can kind of start your own museum at home. Every photo I hold up is scanned and uh, put into the Patreon. So check that out. Like tomorrow, it'll all be posted. Nice, nice. Amanda, you're asking me to read your previous comments. Just repost your comment. Like... It's, it's, it's hard enough to get through all the comments. Everyone's just currently busting your chops for your internet. Um, I'm just <laughs> scrolling back up to get to some questions. Uh, okay, now we're in the now we're in the part where you triggered everyone about the last week and everyone's freaking out. And now we're okay. Okay. Uh, oh my god, I've read. Okay, no, listen, you're just gonna have to post your questions now, people. All right, it's too yeah, much. Let's, let's let's just do a rapid fire. Yeah. Uh, anything about me my life my work serial killer school shooters mass murders whatever you want to talk about american crime uh guns what you have it um, okay let's, Can, let's what, what was the name of the serial killer we're talking about tonight somebody missed the 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 announcement charles, of that charles albright the eyeball killer the dallas ripper charles albright is okay. his name do you ever believe anyone that tells you that they're innocent obviously on a serial killer level well you know it's like not just some random dude that's written to you for help like like yeah. you know not, the... not many not many um i mean everybody claims they're in, well i shouldn't say everybody a lot of people claim they're innocent and i get tired of hearing that especially when the evidence is stacked dna and all the stuff so uh do i believe them not many of them not many yeah. charles albrecht saying he's guilty a lot let me, a, let me, let me, a, let me say something real quick ron yeah. here's one telltale sign charles albrecht um killed four prostitutes okay the last three i'll show you the last these are the victims he killed three in the same manner he shot them in the back of the head he cut their eyeballs out he posed their bodies damn Oh, wow. And he displayed them, laid them out in the suburbs so they'd be found the next morning and shocked the person that found that's, them. That's literally like a, a horror movie plot. A horror movie. And yeah, 100%. Here's the, thing, here's the thing, Ron. He says he's innocent. Okay, there was. So, I'll, I'll go over the whole story here. But guess what? After he got arrested, you're not going to believe this. Guess what? Nobody else was shot in the back of the head and their eyeballs were cut out anymore. Yeah, he's, he's the only guy running around with a bag of eyeballs. That's what I'm guessing. Do you know what I mean? No, 
the, the murder style. And then that's when we like the Atlanta child killer. <laughs> Wayne Williams says he's innocent. I, ironically, after he got arrested, amazingly, nobody else, no, no other kids got killed like that and dumped in the river. So um, it's funny that, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Funny how, it's funny. Yeah. It's funny that no, somebody continue to kill and rip the eyeballs out of people in Dallas, prostitutes, sex workers. Then I'd say, wow, he might be innocent, but yeah. uh, that can, that did not continue. Yeah. That's crazy. And like I say, the way you just described that, the way they're laid out, I mean, that is a hundred percent the thing out of a Hollywood movie. Really mm -hmm. grim. Right, let me see what else we got uh, in the side chat for you. Okay. Oh, where, where did you just, where's the <laughs> Runa just came in from the side there. Are you just bringing me your empty bottle, honey? What are you doing out of bed? You know what's crazy? Yes, I was not in bed. Right, okay. For all you people watching this, Ron doesn't have any children. He, this is like a ghost. Yeah, he lives is, alone. This is, this is just a, a ghost. House. Right, I'm going to go and put this one he back in bed. There's not a person there. This is, uh, this is creepy. What we're going to do like, is we're going to come back like to the clown. questions. We're going to come back to the questions in a minute. All right. <laughs> Come back to the questions in a minute, and we'll just we'll just let Phil start talking about the crazy man who cuts the ladies. I have an internet problem. You have a children problem. Mate, okay, I've let me got talk a about, list of problems. Let me talk about Charles Albright while Ron takes care of this ghost. Um, 1933, Charles Albright was born. Um, at three weeks old, he was adopted. So there's your first ding. We do see quite a bit of killers. Mass murder serial killers have been adopted. So um, adopted. This is him, uh, like, a, I don't know, three to five years old with his mom, adopted mother. He was adopted. And um, when he was young, he, um, he, he uh, was dressed in women's clothes. And we hear that a lot. I think Ed Kemper and John Wayne Gacy, um, he was, his mother dressed him, look at the middle photo, in dresses. Okay, so here he is with his adopted parents dressed up in a dress as a boy scout over here. So he had parents that cared for him and loved him, but some weird stuff was going on, right? Um, yet he, he did pretty well in life. He um, became a football star in college. He was a teacher. And here he is with his last love of his life, Dixie. He played on a softball team like every other person does. Um, I'll show you where he is. He's right down here. That's him. He was the star uh, center fielder. And so like all serial killers, we talk about Ron, they lead very normal yeah. lives they Have this. They have this, you know, they have this really great percep perception that they're, they're normal. In fact, all of his neighbors said, not only is he normal, he's an amazing guy. Right. Great guy. Damn. But he had a couple dings growing up. A couple things, weird things happened when he was growing up. Um, one of the things that happened is uh, he was upset. Oh, well, first of all, let's just say, if you, has anybody ever watched the show? Um, think here, Phil. Think um, the Psycho. Uh, let's see, uh, what's that hotel called? So there was a series. They'll they'll throw it in the chat for you, Ron. Watch okay. this. There was a series where it was based on Psycho and Norma Bates. It was the Bates Hotel. Maybe it was called the Bates Hotel, but. In the Bates Hotel, the kid Norman Bates, as a as a as a as a teenager and as a young man, he yeah. was into taxidermy. Okay. Okay. Well, his mom taught him early about taxidermy. Well, Ron, guess what you do when you do taxidermy? You cut with an exacto knife. You cut the real eyeballs out of an animal. Okay. And you replace them with little marbles or fake eyes sure. or whatever. Um, his parents were so either cheap or poor that they wouldn't buy him the fake eyeballs. So he would go to the store and look in the window and dream that he would have these eyeballs someday. His mom Freaking would just take out. buttons, put buttons in there. She would just stick buttons but, and stick but, them. That's so creepy. That is so that's creepy. Button right? eyes. That's where it starts. So oh, now man. you got this young boy who's fascinated with eyeballs. Are you see where I'm going? Yeah. And then as a teenager or in college, he played a trick on a friend and he cut out the eyes of his um, ex-girlfriend of all her photos oh, no. and he replaced them with someone else's eyes and he put them all over the dorm room, the oh, ceiling no. above the urinal in the dorm. Um, he had another eye experience. Do you know what? See, if this was a movie at this point, we'd be going, no one would do this. This is too far fetched. No one would do this. And this is what this guy did. Did you see what I mean? Yeah. And we always ask this. I always ask this when we do these lives, like, 
do we think he might be a serial killer yet? Like, like when do we start to get like, where, where are the bells going off the alarms? Right. But all through his life, basically he was a con man. He was arrested numerous times for um, stealing and theft and forgery. He forged his college grades. I mean, he was just a con man. So he continues this con, in my opinion, in, in prison that I'm not guilty. Okay. Um, he did get popped for molesting a nine-year-old female, and he did plead guilty to that. And he did very little time. So another thing we see a common trend, Ron, is like, remember we saw with Gacy and others is they get arrested. And instead of doing the time they're supposed to do, they're yeah. released way, early. way too early. Yeah. And they're on the street. And, and that's what happened to him. He got popped so many times with the, he either got probation, 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 probation. When he went to prison, he got like, I don't know, two years. He did six months. He just and got no time. What year? What, what sort of decade was that, that you went to jail for the abuse charges? Uh, he, he was born in 33. So he was yeah, a teenager okay. in the fifties. Yeah, okay. Let me see when he got popped for the nine year old. Um, his mother died in 81 when he was 48 years old. Let me see. Where did he get popped for the nine year? I wonder if he was older. Let me look real quick here. One second. Uh, no. One second. I got to find it. That's right. Don't worry. He was, he would break into homes and steal yeah. women's uh, nude photos. Um, arrested for st stolen property forged his uh his grades at college arrested for forgery um here we're getting close to it here his mother dies he's 48 oh here he goes arrested he's 48 years old 1981 okay. he's arrested please guilty a nine-year-old okay 1981 he's 48 years old um very little time yeah his father died in, when he was 53 in 1986 so it starts to unravel after his parents die and they were pretty tough on him. And so his crimes began, uh, he divorced his wife in, in 87, he's 50, 50, uh, 54. And he begins killing at the age of 57. So he starts late in life. Most serial killers start in their twenties. He started in the fifties and he just started killing. He, he killed someone at the age of 57 he killed at 58, at 58 and 58. So, Damn. you know, boom, boom, boom. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the age of 57, 58. So he killed all his, his three, four murders were within uh, a two-year span. That was quite late in life as well. I mean. Yeah. I mean, that's a late, that's a late blooming yeah. serial. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, you can see he changes MO. He was killing white females. Then he switched in his third victim to the, the black female. Yeah. He targeted sex workers. That was his target. Yeah, yeah. Um, he would. Um, he treated them very well, so they trusted him. And um, he took a paper route in the middle of the night, which gave him an alibi while he's out at three and four, four and five in the morning. Oh, okay. So he would he would pick them up, probably have sex with them. He would um, shoot them in the back of the head. And then he would, he might, he sometimes would beat them, but usually he would just shoot them in the back of the head. He would cut their eyeballs out, take them to the suburbs and display their bodies in, in, in the same way every time. And it was meant to shock the, the, the person who discovered the body. Sometimes it was kids going to school. So, um, yeah, I mean, he had a, a definite MO. This is some of the autopsy stuff from his case. Again, all of these photos will be scanned and put on my Patreon tomorrow. You can get them all, as well as the letters and the really cool stuff he sent me. I'm going to put it all on there so you'll have it all. And listen, oh, wow. when you go into my Patreon, I got, I got unedited, uncensored interviews from the podcast I did. I've got crime scene photos. We just posted the West Memphis 3. But this stuff here, like the, he sent me about why he's, he's innocent. There's like you know eight double sided pages. Oh, this stuff, if you if it's scanned, it'll be like you have the original copy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you, your scans, your scans, your your scans are pretty damn good. You can see what kind of letters he sent me? Uh, you'll have his address if you want to send him a letter. Uh, you could do that. So that'll all be on the Patreon tomorrow. But again, he has a, he has an mo, and um, he's displaying the bodies in a certain way. And you notice that's in the street. I mean, can you imagine waking up in the morning and driving by and going, what the hell is that? Right? Here's a little close up. 
Uh, this is the the black female. Look how she's laying in the street naked, yeah. missing her eyes. Damn. And this is a crazy, shocking, nightmarish. Like like Ron said, it's a horror movie. And what did he do with the eyes? Does any like did he stick them in the animals or did he just? Does anyone they know? Never found, they never found the eyes. <laughs> Fucking, that's even weirder. They never found the eyes. Because you'd think you'd think that you would. You would think, because obviously they're going to search everything, okay? It's not like they're just going to be like, oh, well, we've got them now. We'll just not search anything. They're going to search everything, right? right so they, did. They, searched everything. they could not find the eyes. Like, what's he done with the eyes? I mean, you can't just so, cut them out and then just throw them away. I mean, they, some... It's shocking that he didn't have them in his house. Yeah. Maybe he just took great joy cutting them out. Maybe yeah. he wanted to shock people. He hated prostitutes. Hated them. Damn. This is what he looks like today. He's near death. Oof. So we know he hated prostitutes. Here's a little before and after. Arrest photo today. Damn. So I, th I think he just probably disposed of the eyes. He got rid of the gun because he didn't have the gun that matched. So he got rid of the gun. And so he, he was smart enough that he can easily say, I didn't do this. Okay. Well, let's... they had a lot of evidence. They had a lot of fiber evidence and hair evidence. Um, the bodies were dumped where he has rental houses. I mean, there's a lot of connection there. Yeah. And, um, the prostitutes all said it, it was him. I mean, that's the guy that's trying to pick us up and yeah. all that. He tried to deny he doesn't even pick up prostitutes. And they're like, oh, yeah, we know. Everybody knows him. He got picked out of all the lineups. So um, I believe he killed at least three. Some people doubt it, though. Some people doubt it. Well, here's the thing, right? When, if we arguably say the eyeballs, just for argument's sake, are trophies in the same serial killer trophy category as any other yeah. trophy, is it not quite unusual for them not to find the trophies? Like, do, does, are a lot of serial killers, do they, get, do they go down and never tell people where their hoard is effectively? Does that make sense? A lot of times they're caught with their trophies. John yeah. Wayne Gacy was, Ted Bundy was. Um, a lot of those guys, but a lot of times, um, some of them like Clyde Gibson buried his trophies and he has to lead somebody to it later. Uh, John Williams did the same thing. Uh, the, uh, uh, the long haul trucker killer, Damn, the big, he's called the big rig killer, but some of them took no trophies. Delmas Colvin yeah. said, I, you know, my trophies, my, they're in my memory. My memory it's, is my trophy. So it's just, again, though, it's like, we are hoping for a cookie cutter answer. And again, it's just, nah, sorry, mate. Some of them bury them. Some of them send them out to sea. Some of them have none. It's just, it's scary. I've got a really good question here for you. Um, does Phil believe that the authorities are now quicker to make these arrests than they were years ago? Does he, does he still see serial killer murders gain the high number of bodies that they used to see? I would say yes. Um, they're still out there doing their thing. Um, you know, we, we have about 50, the FBI predicts about 50 active serial killers right now. I think it's more like a hundred. I think it's double what the FBI believes. Now, remember a lot of people always argue with me about this. A serial killer only has to kill two people with the cooling off period. It used yeah. to be three or more. Now it's two or more. Every day I get someone in my YouTube comments. Hey, Phil, uh, sorry to break it to you. A serial killer only has to kill three. You're wrong. Not two. No, I'm not wrong. The FBI has just changed it to two or more because you're killing in a series. Yeah. And, um, and, and by the way, it doesn't have to be sexually motivated either. It could just be you're angry at somebody. Yeah. Like, for example, this guy might not have had sex with these victims. He just killed them, shot them in the head, cut their eyes out. He's angry. He hates prostitutes. He's not doing this for sex. Delmas Colvin never had sex with his victims where John Wayne Gacy did. He was a lust killer. Ted Bundy liked sex, but Ted Bundy really enjoyed beating the victims even more than sex and biting them and yeah. assaulting them. Right. So everybody has their thing. We, we heard last week, Gore and uh, David Gore and Waterfield, they enjoyed ab abducting people. That was the charge for them. They got a rise out of that. Damn. Um, Ed Kemper liked decapitating people. Jeffrey Dahmer liked eating and having sex with the dead bodies. I mean, everybody has their thing. It doesn't always have to be sex though. It can be anger. It could be racial, racially uh, motivated. It could be a lot of those things. Damn. It's just such a confusing spectrum to try and assume that there is a, like a format to what makes these people. I mean, we're talking about a guy who was obsessed with taxidermy eyeballs and 
then what 50 years later goes on a killing rampage of prostitutes cuts their eyes out and they were never found what did he do with the eyeballs like it's here's another weird thing somebody asked him to paint a picture of his wife he painted so he took forever on the painting and the guy's like man where's the picture of my wife charles where you know where's my wife at and so one time he came to the house and he had this painting, right? Imagine this, Ron. He had this painting. It was all done except for, well, guess what wasn't done? There was two white spots yeah. on the painting where the eyes went. So he was in a taxidermy loved eyeballs. He cut the eyes out of people in college. He messed with the eyes in his paintings. And ready for this, later on in his cell, he had lots of pictures on those cell walls of eyes he loved there's there's eyes. there's more of this he's got a weird secret that he's not told anyone about i'm telling you because that there's 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 got to be more to this eyeball thing like it's so weird it's so weird uh i just want to say 242 of you out there really really how, how are you all doing uh, greetings from norway greetings from scotland how are you doing um okay uh 1991, he's arrested, convicted, charged, given a life sentence in 1991. And like you said, around he was 58 years old. So he's a, this is a late bloomer. Yeah. A late bloomer serial killer. Now, there's some talk that one of his rental, one of his tenants, um, Axton Schindler, might have been involved in this, but they never were able to prove. None of the sex workers identified him. Okay. And no evidence was found at his house. But, um, he was a late bloomer, arrested at the age of 58. He's been in prison since, you know, oh. 19, um, 1991. And um, he's done very few interviews and claimed he's innocent the entire time. And uh, he responded to me and it was very cordial. Like our viewers are just even making this even more creepy, right? They're all like, the, the eyes are the windows to the soul, Phil, right? Sure. <laughs> Just to put another cheers for that. Cheers for that chilling fucking moment. All right. Uh Good questions, people. Thanks for being here, man. I, I can't see the chat. And the way we got this set up, I can't see the chat. So yeah. I'm trusting my man Ron. I'm, I'm doing my best. Uh, I'm doing my best. Welcome, I'll welcome, welcome to the live. And um again, any questions you have for me, my personal life, my what yeah. I do, my business, my office is there, nothing's off limits today. Somebody somebody was asking about um the amount of cold cases you've worked on and how many successes you've had with uh, finding bodies and things like this. You know what? I've been doing this a long time. Um, I, I, I've been doing this 35 years. So the first 20 years, I focused on teen killers and school shooters. So I wasn't doing anything with bodies or anything like that. Um, so it's 2021. I started in 85. So about 2005, I started making the switch to adding serial killers and mass murderers. Sure. In the last five years, I've gone full blown after serial killers and specifically the last two years. Like I've been talking to them for 15 years, but I've really gone deep into them now. And so I'm just in the, uh, really in this, this last year, we've decided to start closing cold cases. So uh, we're talking to dozens of inmates right now. We're setting them up. A lot of them, we're kind of preparing them for confessions. We got one next week, yeah. uh, with Clyde Gibson. Uh, we talked to Chester Turner, uh, the South Side Slayer from California this week. He says once his last appeal's done, he's gonna he's gonna give us everything, and there's gonna be probably a lot of unsolved murders there. Damn. And um, we've 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 we 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 we're looking for a body with Delmas Colvin in, in Illinois. Uh, we solved a case with one of his cases. We also solved a case in Evansville, Indiana, with Will and Clyde Gibson. Uh, he's about to give us another one next week. So we're kind of just at the beginning stages of of closing cases. Sure. And um, we've been working with uh, uh, lots of other serial killers. I don't want to name them because there's a lot of people we're talking to right now sure. that are talking about cold cases. But here's the challenge, Ron. You ready for this? Yeah. Uh, all, all the people listening, this is going to shock you. You call the police department. H Hello, uh, Evansville PD. I have a cold case. I'm going to give you, I have a confession to a cold case. Could you call me back? Yeah, sure, mate. I'll get right okay. on that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Day one day, two yeah, day, three days. Hey, well, hey, Evans, well, it's it's me again. I'm just I have a cold case. After about three calls, you stop calling and you realize, whoa, these people don't give a shit about cold cases. Yeah. Some some police departments. So, you know, it depends who the victim is. Uh, remember, we talk about being less dead. 
drug addicts, yeah. prostitutes, sex workers are less dead and they don't work their cases as hard as others. That, also, that's all part of it. I think as well, you got to remember, if a sex worker has been killed and she's buried as a Jane Doe, I'm assuming the serial killer isn't exactly that intimate with his freaking prey that he knows her birth name. Just to say, oh, I know where so and so is buried. So right. it may be the case that uh, Jane Doe twenty seven, in case whatever, uh, is right. found and the case is is closed, but there's no resolve because of uh, you know the the time period and and all that. But if if you want to uh, hear Phil flexing his skill set, if you go to uh, his Spotify, I will post a link this now, there is Where the Bodies Are Buried, and there's an, em an episode, there's an episode there with uh, Delmas where he gives up the goods. So I'm going to post this in the side chat and you guys can go and binge that later. And uh, yeah, we'll keep you updated with um, the progress. A lot of people asking how Daisy's doing. Daisy's doing great. Um, let's see if I can get my wife to bring um, bring her up here. I'll see if, she, if she's awake. Um, let's see if I can get her up here. Yeah, because she likes to sleep, right? Like, she sleeps a lot. She likes to schnooze. Uh, she's a schnoozer. She sleeps a lot. Let me what's, tell you. It, what's it like having to wake up a deaf dog? Like, it must be pretty jarring for the dog, I would imagine. Yeah, you know, they... Um, you know, she gets startled a lot, yeah. right? So that's part of the deal. Um, you kind of have to know how to deal with her. You don't yeah. walk up and just grab her. Yeah. Um, but, you know, sometimes you stomp. That's your feet. I was going to say, yeah. That. Yeah. Um, there's actually a collar we, we have for her, Ron, and you, pu you put it on. It's a little vibrating thing. It's not a shock collar. It's a vibrating collar. You push the remote, and it kind of vibrates a little bit. Yeah, and it's bzz, bzz, it's, we're trying to keep training with that. Yeah, where she – it basically what that means is look at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She looks at us. We have, you know, we have different, we have sign language for eat, you know, go outside, you know, sit, shake. We have all these things and she's doing good. She's doing really good. Yeah. All right. Nice. Nice. You're going to have to give me another two seconds because I've been infiltrated in here again by a psychopath. So just, uh, <laughs> just, just talk, just, just talk for a minute or two, Phil, and then, then I'll be back. Let me see if I can throw a question at you. Yeah. <laughs> give me a question. Give me a question for you, go. I need, give me a good question. Okay. Uh, we, we, I think you covered this before. Tell the, tell the difference between uh, how organized crimes uh, and gangs who do multiple killings and how serial killers and mass killers all differ. Gotcha. Yeah, so um, there's different types of killers, right? So let's start off with um, a spree killer kills multiple people, but it could be within a couple different days and it could be different locations, right? Usually it's within like a week. Um, Andrew Cunanan, who went across the East Coast, came down to Miami and killed, um, uh, uh, what's that, what's that famous designer in Miami? Ah, oh, I can't remember his name, but Cunanan killed him. And, um, he's a spree killer. He, he killed multiple people, different states. And within a week, um, you want to see Daisy, here's Daisy. This is my little Daisy. She has her own show, you know. Can you say hello to the people? Say hello. She's gonna chew on my hand. This is the, this is her deal. Look, look over there. See, look, look up here. Look right there. Um, she's 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 awesome, man. She's uh, we wouldn't have it any other way. You know, Ron was saying that, that what's tough about a deaf dog. Let me tell you about. There's so many positives with the deaf dog. She doesn't bark at other dogs outside. Um, when she's sleeping, she never wakes up. We can vacuum and have a party and play music. And, you know, uh, it's pretty amazing. Hey, hey, say hello to these people. <laughs> she didn't see you up there. My wife's trying to get her attention. Hey, look, over here. <laughs> but uh, anyways, she's doing great. Oh, Daisy. I miss Daisy. She's doing, she's, she's looking 20 good. Pounds. She's 20 pounds. She's growing. She's big. Um, so we were talking different. So we have Spree Killer, Andrew Cunanan. Damn, if I can't remember who he, he killed, if you can help me in the chat, who did he kill? Uh, Versace, I think it's Versace. Um, a mass murderer kills everybody at one time. One location, one time, you walk into a restaurant. I interviewed a mass murderer this week who shot 14 people at a restaurant in North Carolina. Mass murder. Serial killer kills at least two or more with the cooling off period. You got to take a break. Now, here's where we get into... Are gang members serial killers? No, they're killing for different reasons. 
are hitman serial killers. No, they're getting paid. Yeah, it's motivation and intent. Are Bonnie, are Bonnie and Clyde serial killers? No, they're bank robbers. You know, um, serial killers are killing because they enjoy it. Yeah, and the others are basically a byproduct of crime. Right, they enjoy sense. it. And yeah. They're not getting paid to do it. They love doing it. Yeah. Uh, but just remember, it doesn't have to be sexually motivated. My first episode of the podcast, you're going to hear the Zodiac copycat. And he would just walk up to people and shoot them on the streets of Brooklyn and walk away. There was yeah. no sexual, you know, there's no, no, no yeah. sexual, no us, nothing like that. He was just, he was making a name for himself and he was enjoying it. So every, here's the biggest thing, Ron, you can't jam every serial killer into Ted Bundy, John yeah. Gacy and Joe Dahmer. You can't, there's, they're all different. I would they're say not to expect. And they're like, like I said, this, this guy's neighbors, like there's no way Albright's a serial yeah. killer. He's the nicest guy in our street. I, the only it's way a, that I can see to credibly define serial killers in groups is by decade. Right. So serial killers from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 90s, they all have different uh, different forms of law enforcement technology coming after them. They've all got different ways to intercept their prey. In the 70s, there was no Facebook or social media. But in the noughties, that's how people can sit at home and lure people in, if you see what I mean. So that's the only way. People doing that now, too, around where they use... They use uh, Craigslist. We have the Craigslist yeah. killers. There's a couple of those. Uh, people meeting people on Tinder, Facebook. Yeah. Um, yes. So now you just you're using technology. Um, it's e you don't see as many murders usually because there's two different types of serial killers in my opinion. Ones that kill cross country, and ones that kill everybody in one town. That's why I'm always amazed. Like next week, Anthony Sowell kills 11 women in his neighborhood. BTK kills 10 people in his neighborhood i mean that's crazy so uh, the, uh that that to me is really tough like those are less so far between because everybody has cameras on their house everybody has you know ring doorbells and everybody uh, it's easier to catch people now but the cross-country killers the people that move around like ted bundy did that's why i think he killed 100 people uh delmas colvin uh big rig killer john williams these guys moving around um these guys the truck stop killer yeah. right yeah. They move around. They have mobile crime scenes. They're dumping bodies in the woods. And so are we ever going to solve a lot of, uh, you know, Delmas Colvin's murders? No. Why? Because he, he he has a dead woman in his truck. He pulls out on the side of the road somewhere in Nebraska, carries a body yeah. in the woods. There's no way we're going to find that body. Yeah. So well, we're trying I, I, to find bodies he dumped that are close to buildings yeah. and in rest areas and truck washes and stuff like that. And we had an this, I think I can answer this question. Did okay. Delmas Colvin enjoy killing? I think he loved he loved his killing. He loved it. He absolutely loved it. And I'm pretty sure if you asked him right now, hey, if I let you out for half an hour, <laughs> other than going and getting a KFC, what's the next thing you're doing? Well, I'm probably going to kill the woman that gave me the KFC. Okay, just to fit it all in the half an hour. When I asked the question, uh, would you kill again? He said, probably. I said, why? He said, somebody will piss me off. <laughs> it's so fucked True. up. It's so fucked up yeah. how yep. on point that is. Because, I mean, he even said that to, to, to us during the interview. You know, you would pick up a, 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 a sex worker in the, in the van, and sometimes they, they, they lived. There was no problems. But then yeah. there were some days, you know, where they said something or they did something, and now they're dead in the back of the cab. They pissed him off. They disrespected him. By the way, I think Delmas Colvin is killing his, he won't admit this, but I think he's killing his stepmother every time he kills someone. Yeah, I think that is the the, the number one, like, her so Delmas bad. theory, he 100%. He was 14 years old, man. He, wanted, he said, I didn't, know, I didn't know how to dispose of her body at 14 years old. Yeah. He said, but that would have been my first victim, my, my stepmother. And I believe he was killing her every time he killed. Yeah. I'm just going to grab you some more questions. Okay, yeah. do you do you think technology helps or hinders when it comes to finding victims? Uh, there are so many old missing posts that, that get shared, etc. Um, does this put the police off investigating missing people? Because, yeah, does, does basically, does social media hinder or help when it comes to finding and uh, getting justice for victims, do you think? I think it helps because it does hold law enforcement accountable. Okay. It does put pressure on local police departments, right? So like if there's a case they've let go or maybe it's just gone cold and maybe they're not working as hard anymore. When people keep posting stuff and pushing stuff on social media, 
it does keep, I think, law enforcement engaged. So the answer to that question, yes, I think social media helps. Yeah. Uh, it also makes everybody experts. I, I can't tell you how many people try to school me. Like, let me just tell you, you know, you read a fucking book or watched the YouTube video and now you're a crime, you know, you're an FBI yeah. profiler. Yeah. Uh, everybody's an expert now too, as well. So you got to deal with that. I got all kinds of hate on my posts. Like, Listen, it's that's, really funny. I, I just chuckle at people. It's funny. Yeah, it's 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 the way of the internet as well, uh, and you're definitely going to have a lot of uh, jealous individuals when it comes right. to when they right. see what you, when we see what we're churning out. Uh, you know, that's that's the that's the. Hang on a second. That's the gold. I'm going to try and get you in our question. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> Ron is working on an office. He's going to be oh, happy. Fuck. <laughs> fucking right, Ron's work. Ron's already packed half the fucking stuff. He's ready. Uh, Ron, have uh, you not Ron talked to a... Have a kid prom for much longer? Ron, have you uh, talked to a deep web serial killer? I've ca- talked to a few people that claim to be deep web serial killers, but come on, come on. Uh, are, they, are they real? Are they just playing? Well, this is the thing. Here's a question for you. Have any serial killers ever spoken of uh Anywhere where serial killers would communicate with each other. Is there any unknown serial yeah. killer creepy Reddit yes. page or something? Tell us all about that. that. When you go deal with your issue. Um, there is a truck driver serial killer club. And a lot of the truck drivers, there's many truck driver serial killers, guys. And it's the perfect occupation to commit a, a, a homicide a serial killing spree, right? A series of murders because you, you know, you, you pull into a truck stop and a woman, most of the time women will uh, knock on your truck and crawl in. Uh, they're in your vehicle. It's the same way you, you pick up a sex worker in a city somewhere. <clears throat> and now they're in your vehicle and you're not just in a, in a car, you're in a, a vehicle that is perfect for what you want to do. Once you put your hands around someone's throat, it's pretty quiet. And um, you kill them in your cab and you drive out of that truck stop and you're going down. Now you got the entire country to dump that body. And the guys that uh, have, been, have been successful at it, take off their clothes. You know, they dump their nude body deep in the woods where no one will find it. And they put their clothes in a bag and put them in the dumpster somewhere else. And that's, that's why there's a lot of those. And a lot of those guys communicate with each other. And Delmas Colvin would tell us <clears throat> that he, um, he, uh, he, he had lots of friends who were kind of into this. And um, that's one of the things I've asked him. Can we, can you help me track some of these guys down? Uh, Clyde Gibson also knows other killers who are, he knows other serial killers that are free right now. They're still act, you know, they're still free, but a truck driver came to town, Toledo, Ohio, where Delmas Colvin was. See Delmas Colvin was a truck driver, but he had this little side gig where he was a pimp. And so Ron, you roll into town <laughs> and, and you're like, I want to party. Okay. And I go, okay. Um, and, you know, so Ron would say, uh, I'm here for the night. Okay. So what I would do is I would give Ron a prostitute. It costs, I would give Ron a prostitute and some drugs. Okay. And he paid me like three to $500 for the day. And don't anyone oh, cut this out with this live stream and edit this. Right. Okay. I'm, sh- yeah, so, Shane, I'm looking at you. Okay. I'm telling you when the memes start appearing on discord of uh, Phil going. So I sold Ron some drugs and gave Ron a prostitute. Don't need it. All right. Just don't need, doesn't need to happen. Okay. But okay, yeah. So Ron, you don't have to pay the prostitute because I give her crack. Okay. So she's been paid with her crack. She goes off to a hotel with you or whatever, okay. or a truck, so my truck, and you spend the night with her. So that's what Delmas Colvin did. He would sell, he would pimp out, you know, sex workers, yeah. prostitutes. Some people call them prostitutes. Some people are offended by that. They call them sex workers. I, I, law enforcement calls them prostitutes. So okay. Any event, any event, one guy came to town, Brown, and he said, um, you know, Delmas knows who he is. And he came to town. He said, I'd like a woman. And Delma said, because Delma said, if you ever come to Toledo, I'll hook you up. Well, he came to town and he said, like a woman. And Delma asked the question. He said, it shocked him. Delma said, do you want her for the night, the weekend, or do you want to keep her? The guy did this. Keep her. He said, I'd like to keep her. Okay. So he went and grabbed a woman. I can't remember her name. She had a street name. Damn. Uh, say it's Ch- Ch- Charity or something like that. And he said, um, I sold it. I sold that guy charity for five hundred dollars, and I haven't seen her since. It's so mad, right? That's crazy, man. So yes, there are. There's a serial killer truck driver group, and they do. Uh, what they'll say is they'll say, "Hey, Breaker One Nine. Hey, Ron, I got a package for you here in Toledo. Yeah. You show off the package as a woman. Yeah. 
probably tied up or dead in the truck. I like to think that Charity and the truck driver just really hit it off and got married and settled down together and have a couple of kids and it all worked out well. But let me add, let me add one more piece then to dispel not. your to dispel and destroy, <laughs> let me just your story. destroy all hope. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. that truck driver, Delma said that guy showed him his truck and he said he said he gave me the creeps. That guy gave <laughs> a serial killer, Thomas Colvin, the creeps. Oh, God. Because you, okay. you looked past, you, you open up, you look past his two truck seats, you're looking in the back. Um, there's a, there's a, there's bars, there's bars up like a prison cell. So, oh, man. He set, set up where he can imprison a woman in there and lock her in. Do you think, said, do you think, I, I never right? seen that before. Like, do you think there's, do you think if we just started randomly phoning around where these, like, cabins get sent once a truck's decommissioned you think there's some mad junkyard stories about blood covered fucking truck cabins and weird stuff that's been found and there must be there must, must be. be there must or, be or there was a device that damn that, that looked like you know that you can imprison someone yeah now, Ron, you, you've seen this hit the internet a lot where a house will be for sale and it's got it's got cells in the basement yeah yeah. People make fun about that on the internet. They're like, anybody want to buy this? This is creepy. Hey, that might be for a reason. I believe in the U.S. and in the U.K. and wherever you're from, Canada, I believe that there are people right now in prison, in homes, locked up in cells, in basements. Yeah, yeah. of Net, course. Sex trade, the whole thing. Of course. It's definitely happening. We've got a lot of missing children in all of our countries. And now, uh, where do you and think they are? A hundred million percent. hundred million percent. Now, this is your wheelhouse, Ron, so talk, talk to us about that. Uh, there's, there's, there's evidence. I mean, before we get into the, the creepy and the weird, the people trafficking global slavery just on a house nanny level is the worst than it's ever been in, in the history of, of being humans, okay? There's there's little 12-year-old boys chained up to fucking mills and looms in India that are just sitting there weaving fucking carpets all day. Not a single slave driver or slave owner or slave seller has been prosecuted, okay? People traffickers, sure. But it's it's wild how underreported the, the slavery issue is. And sex workers and all of the nasty things you hear about there's there's a guy um who i don't know if you ever heard the, the the story of the the murder house and this guy that was on instagram who does cleanups after you know if there's yeah. been a shooting or anything like this and yeah, he crimes, keeps crimes and cleanups, yeah, yeah basically he came and told his story that he was cleaning up this house it took like it was a 10-day cleanup once the cleanup had been done uh, two days later, the FBI came in and the house was just d demolished and taken away and all this stuff. It was could be a lot of bullshit, but it, it, it was it was weird. And I, I, I genuinely believe that there's a lot of twisted people. There's a lot of people who will profit from that. you got to remember, when we talk about us sitting here going, oh, I don't believe that, that's because you're in fucking America or in the UK or in some cushy developed world okay right. but when a twisted mind travels to a place where life is cheap where property is cheap where police payoffs are cheap that is a different fucking kettle of fish okay that's and, and it, it, it's a fantasy of a lot of people and ron you know this because you do this but this, yeah. a lot of serial killers have this fantasy uh, btk had this fantasy that he wanted sex slaves you know gary heinick in philadelphia he had people captured in his basement, <laughs> Ariel, Ariel Castro in I... Cleveland, people captured in his basement. Yeah. And a lot of killers, when they're arrested, Ron, they're like, you know, my ultimate goal, and BTK said this, Ron, I want to have yeah. a barn with sex slaves. Okay. And a lot of guys feel that way. And I and I think, you don't think that's happening right now? It's got to be happening. Of course and it's happening. We're going to discover this. And we're going to start discovering people here soon, hopefully. It's 100% happening. And see, when you talk about creepy houses with things in the basement, uh, we had, I had a friend uh, last, um, a girl that I knew on Discord last year. And in her mm -hmm. house, there was a weird room under the stairs that for some reason you couldn't hear anything that was going on in that room when you were in the hall it was it was weirdly soundproof and you wow. know how common it is to have a drain right in the middle of a soundproof room under the stairs phil wow 
do you see what I mean? And we, you know, we all, we we would make jokes about that because she would always be like, "Oh man, you know, my mum's doing my fucking head, and she's gonna go in the fucking room under the stairs tonight." <laughs> you know what I mean? And we'll find, we'll just hose it down, and no one will know. Uh, but then, and a lot, and a lot of kids have got have escaped, right? Like yeah. Todd Colehap had a yep. woman chained in a in a in a big steel container in his backyard. A lot of women have escaped. Young girls, women have escaped, and yep. Ariel Castro, they did there. A um, couple of them did. So, you know, I think, well, you know, I don't even well, know what, how we got here, but I think this is what we're going to see a lot of. And uh, it is a fantasy of a lot of killers to have sex slaves. Yeah. And let's the let's just circle back to, to one point there. How relevant is pure luck, right, when it comes to a lot of these serial killer cases, especially when it comes to the really clever bastards? Because I often say this, it's like, I swear that most of the most of the UK serial killers, their brake lights out, right? Yeah. And, and that's what catches them or something really fucking stupid. Like they're, they're, they stop in their car and a policeman that they just happened to, to know in primary school walks past and engages them in conversation. How much do you think when, we come, when it comes to like the top tier killers, how relevant is luck in the luck modern world? How, luck is how they are arrested. Yeah. Um, we have in the United States, we have about 12,000 murders a year. 3,000 of them go unsolved. So 25% of murders in America go unsolved. So you've got okay? a one in four chance of getting away with murder in America. That's Think about fucking that. wild. Think about that. And so here's, here's what I want to say, Ron. And, and, and I love law enforcement. And I work with law enforcement very closely. So I applaud the guys that work these cases. They don't deserve to see what they see and all that. But when it's one thing... When a husband kills his wife or a lover kills their lover or, you know, whatever you, you it's some of the cases are solved immediately. Yeah. Very easy cases, sure. right? When you have someone killing strangers, there's no connection to the victim. Yeah. It becomes very difficult. Sure. If you're halfway good at what you do, it becomes extremely difficult. And yes, it is going to take some luck. A speeding ticket. Uh, a lot of guys, uh, Son of Sam got a parking ticket and he was arrested because of a parking ticket. Yeah. The werewolf butcher, werewolf butcher got a parking ticket or a speeding ticket. He was arrested because of that. You know, a lot of these guys, we got lucky. Club Anthony Sowell in Cleveland next week, I'll have the, I'll hopefully I have the pictures for you. A woman dove out of the third floor window and someone saw her dive out. And that's how they arrested the Cleveland Strangler. So a lot of times it's luck. Damn. People, Sometimes they get careless. Like John Wayne Gacy abducts a, a young boy from his neighborhood, from a pharmacy. You know, he, he, he strayed from the sex worker, the runaway kids and all that, the drug addicts. And he actually went after a kid that had family and who was, who was missed. And yeah. he got, got, got lazy or he got careless. All right, we've got a, a story here. A friend of mine was a victim to human trafficking and escaped with help of a John. She was missing for eight years. No one believed her. She was broken and killed herself. That's really sad, like that. And do you know, it's yeah. it's 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 weird that we still live in a world where she would have been charged with prostitution, right? That's, that's the, sad. That's the messed up thing, is really sad. Yeah. Um, wow. I'm just going for some more questions for you, mate. Um, Ron, are you going to drop uh, the Terry Blair interview this week? Yeah, it's tomorrow. It was meant to be today, but uh, I had my first uh, corrupted right. file. Um, so Terry, Terry Blair, serial, uh, my, my interview with serial killer, yeah. Kansas City serial killer Terry Blair drops tomorrow. Yep. Um, and we'll, this this will be posted, this whole thing. And uh, we'll just continue to post uh, videos. Yeah. And, um, oh, yeah, another, there's loads. Another Delmas and Daisy show coming up soon. And yeah, there's loads coming this week. There's there's loads and loads are coming uh, this week. Like I say, the first week we tried uh, multiple short videos. I think it was three videos and a clip and then a live show. Last week, it was three videos all about 30 minutes long, 25, 30 minutes long. And then the Sunday show, there should have been the serial killer interview as well, but that'll be uh, up tomorrow. But yeah, there was a weird... Ron, some of the people complained on the one video with yeah. the soul sucker. They didn't like the background music. Tell yeah. us what you did. You yeah, that. What, so what, what I've was... done is uh, for, the, for the last lot of videos, I took the music out. And I think for... For the, for, the, for the next couple, I'm going to try a couple of different things where rather than have a long piece of music when um, the interview starts or there's like a change in tone, I might put a very slight something. But to be honest, 
um, I might just leave the music out because I was actually listening to a podcast earlier today uh, and there was no music in it. Um, and it was it was good. So I, it's maybe just one of those things. I think it, it, it might work better when people are trying to focus in on what you're saying rather than having the music. But we'll see. We'll see. Like I say, I, we're, we're listening to everybody. And uh, I'd Let me just say real quick, too, um, this week alone, this week alone, I interviewed two serial killers, Sweet. Uh, Michael Madison, Chester Turner, the Southside Slayer. I interviewed a mass murderer who opened fire at Luigi's Restaurant, Fayetteville, North Carolina. And I interviewed a teen killer who stabbed his entire family to death in Oklahoma. So we've got some really cool interviews coming out for you guys. So you get some inner, like really inside their minds. Everything we do is crime prevention based. Everything Ron does is to stop these crimes. We're both into saving yeah. children and kids. Right where. Um, we're also going to be posting a bunch of different educational videos on serial killers. And my podcast, Where the Bodies Are Buried, season two drops first week in March. Yeah, it with does. Uh, uh, the copycat Zodiac is episode one. Uh, episode two, I believe, is the werewolf butcher. You got to look at that case. Episode three is a uh, is the kid who killed his family. So we got some good stuff coming up for you. So I'm I'm going to throw this out to you. So once once we're sort of into phase two of the channel, which is obviously once it's monetized, and we've got th um, the membership up and running. Is there any sort of little hints at any sort of big names in the serial killer world that we could maybe get an interview in the future or see coming to your channel for the the select few supporters that want to take the next step uh, absolutely like um son of sam um definitely we can get him I i'm trying to get charles tex watson from the manson family who committed most of the murders out there tate labianca's um i'd like to get um uh, the, uh, uh, the the happy face killer Keith Jesperson, mm. he'll probably do something with us. Um, yeah. yeah, we have a lot of people like that. Um, we could reach out to, and um, that's exciting. So man. We, have, we, have two, we have two distinct types of killers, uh, serial killers, Ron. Some will talk about their crimes and some won't, oh, of course. Um, even if they don't talk about their crimes, I'll still want to interview them just so you guys can yeah. kind of hear what they sound like, sure. and you know. They'll talk about their upbringings and what led them to, but some of them don't want to get executed and some of them uh, are in appeals. So uh, Chester Turner didn't really talk about his murders. He's in an appeal. Okay. He's on death on San Quentin. But if he loses his appeal, he said, um, I'm going to give you the interview of a lifetime. I'm yeah. like, let's do this. We'll, we'll, we'll get that one. Yeah. That's, that's exciting. And you know, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a difficult one. It's like, oh, it's exciting if he doesn't get his appeal. So if a man is being going to be sent to death, we've got an exciting bit of... Con it's a weird dynamic, ain't it? It really is. Um, but I guess that's the yeah, price you that, pay. That totally works against what I do. Yeah. Um, there's some people that are like, yeah, let's kill them all. And, and I understand that. Um, number one, death penalty doesn't stop any crime. It's not a deterrent to any crime. Number two, um, <laughs> it, 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 it stops... <laughs> I'm it sorry. I'm, from, I'm sorry, Phil. Someone no, just, I'm going to tell you that. It stops me from getting confessions. Like if, like Delmas Colvin will not confess to any murders in death penalty states. He said that's off the table. And number three is what if we're executing innocent people? Like some people might be innocent. Yeah. So in my opinion, a life sentence with no parole is well, just as good. I, if, if, if polar bear is still out there, I'm actually planning on setting up a stream with Phil and Delmas where I want to look at the American uh, criminal system, prison, all the rest of it, compared to yeah. the Norwegian system, right? Where yeah. literally, because Norway's made up of so many little islands, Phil, right? When you get sent to prison, it's like a small town. There's no fences. There's no cells. You're in a house. There's big fucking kitchen knives, okay? Mm -hmm. In your kitchen. And you have a bedroom that you have a lock for and all this kind of stuff. And you live a relatively normal life, except you're completely cut off from the outside world. There's no freedom or anything like that. But, you know, you try and swim off the island and you're going to get a 50 cal round through the back of your head sort of thing. Um, but that is how they work. And their reoffending rate is one of the lowest in the world because it's all focused on the rehabilitation. Now, obviously, that might not work with Delmas uh, because Delmas will... I, I just don't. Right, right, let's well, let's try it. Let's, we need let's to, get Thomas out. I need you'll to move see. In, move in with you. Yeah, you and your lovely <laughs> wife and children, and you know, let's see how it goes. Hopefully, nah. you don't piss him off. Nah, nah. 
Nah. <laughs> I, there's a lot of things I'll do for the views, but Weekend with Delmas is not one of them, okay? At all. At all. In fact, I would do it if I could... You ever see the video of the guy in the big polar bear cage, right? And he's out there and the wild polar bear's clawing on the plastic cage. I would do it in the polar bear cage. Okay, the guys that are in the water, the guys that are in the cage and the shark infested no. water. No, he could reach through the, the bars. Cage. He could reach through the bars. Right, yeah, I mean, we'll it would have, need to be a it need to be a perspex box, but yeah. You know what'd be cool is you go to prison and spend the night in Delmas's cell. He's got a bunk bed. Uh, hang on a second. Ask <laughs> Phil if he's having Dharma's killer uh, interview at some point. And also, do yeah. you think that true crime motivates people to kill? Uh, for 15 minutes of fame. It's, that's an interesting one. I, I wouldn't say true crime culture. I would say journalism and news coverage uh, is what glorifies to the masses a lot of these killers. In fact, I've, se I've seen quite a lot of uh, YouTube channels that report on crime, uh, just not in a specific true crime sense, but in like a general reporting of, of crime. They will no longer show the killers or give the killers any names or, or anything. Um, so I think... My answer to that, my answer to that ron is i don't think it inspires serial killers no. i think it inspires teenage killers and school shooters okay i believe i believe mass murders have a reason adult, adult killers have reasons to do what they do many of them don't want to be famous in fact a lot of people say oh these serial killers just want to be famous no they don't they want to kill people that's what they love to do but the teen killers and the school shooters i believe are inspired by other the media blowing this shit up to make these people famous. I believe it inspires people. So yes, I believe it inspires people. Um, question. Is, yeah, Am I going to interview Christopher Scarver who killed Jeffrey Dahmer? Chris and I do talk. Um, I'm working hard on Chris Scarver. Uh, he's a very interesting guy. He, he's, he's, he's hard to wrestle. He's like, He's like trying to wrestle an alligator and get him to talk to yeah, you. Plus, I it's imagine tough. I imagine there'll be times where he's given you 90% hope that it's going to happen. And then the next time you oh, yeah. speak, it's like that positive step never even yep. went forward because that's the mindset. They That'll be a little thrill for him. If, uh, he'll, he'll probably do a YouTube interview with us. Yeah. I would say in the next few months, I think you're going to get to hear from Christopher Scarborough who killed Jeffrey Dahmer. And I, I think a lot of people want to get their straight story from him, and he's going to do that. I think as well, it, it sounds pretty stupid, but I imagine some of the people will be watching. Their, they'll have told their friends and family, uh, oh, yeah. you know, Phil, I've spoken to him. He started a YouTube channel or whatever. And there'll be eyes on the respectful handling of all of this, if that makes sense. Here's another one for you. Have you ever interviewed somebody who has escaped the clutches of a serial killer? Um, there are several people who have escaped serial killers. Um, have you ever interviewed any? I can't say I have interviewed them. Sure. Uh, we're working on people like that for the podcast. My, uh, my podcast yeah. was produced in LA. Uh, we're produced by a really cool company. Uh, it's called Grinning Dog. Uh, Grinning Dog is famous for the, the show Duck Dynasty. Uh, those, are, those are my producers. We're owned by Dennis Quaid, the actor. And we are working hard on guests, like experts and, and survivors and all that. I hope in the podcast this this season we will talk to some survivors. But Ron, I'm so focused on the killers right yeah. now that I just I haven't tracked down a lot of survivors. Yeah, plus as well, there's only there's only 24 hours in a day, right? Yeah. And I imagine when you when you if you get up and you have three things to do on a list, right? I imagine in between each of those things, there's 25 phone calls coming in yeah. from prisons, killers, all, all that kind of stuff. So most it, people that survive a serial killer don't really want to talk. I would say a lot of them don't. It's very yeah. rare when they come forward and give their name and do interviews. So it's a combination of tough to reach them, tough to track them down. And yeah. Will they talk? Will they talk? And I respect the victims and I would never put, you know, put any pressure on anybody or no, well, we do this it. for the victims. This is why we do this. So no, for sure. Oh, Tobin, listen, this I'm I'm working on Tobin, right? I'm trying I'm trying to bring my little bit of clout to the table. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a slow progress, okay? Uh, definitely. You, you, you told me you want to interview a UK serial killer. Let's it's find Tobin. One. Let's try it's Tobin. Time. It's uh, uh, Tobin. Tobin. Tobin's in a prison about a mile that way. Okay. Let's so let's contact. Him. I'll yeah, help you. let's do it. Yeah, please, because I would ah, I would like to get Peter, Peter Peter Tobin. Peter, I think it's What's Peter. This? I'll tell you now. I think it's Peter Tobin. Yeah, wild That's story. It. I don't, I don't know other other countries here because that's a wild ass guess see if it's peter tobin yeah it's yeah peter tobin aka bible john right 
Oh, okay, so, yeah, I, I, I'd like to do that with you. Uh, I mean, Peter right. Britton Tobin is a convicted Peter Scottish Tobin. serial killer who has, and sex offender who's currently serving a whole life order in HM prison in Edinburgh for three murders committed between 1991 and 2006. But victims are listed as three plus uh, on his right. on his, bi his bio. Creepy looking dude, right? Like real right. creepy looking dude. Okay. okay. And uh, he was on the lam. Like, he was in prison and then was released from prison. Have we heard this story before? Then killed another two people and then just fucked off for about six or seven years and came up with about 20 identities. Um, wow. we, we all thought he was going to die last year. Like, there was... So it was like when they, just being because it's Scotland, right? You know, but you know what it's like when if Scott, we're pretty, we're a, we're a loving nation, but when it comes to like the dark humor, there was a lot of like memes about Tobin because he had cancer and he was fucked. Like he was just. Did, did he ever? Did he ever do any interviews before, Ron? I don't know. I think there's, ever, I, like I, we we could get his only interview. That would be kind of cool. It would be amazing. And like I say, it's just there. It really is just there. Wow. He's been labeled as a psychopath by the senior psychologist of criminology, David Wilson, uh, uh -huh. who also wrote a book on Tobin connecting him uh, with the Bible John murders in the late 60s. So Bible John and Tobin may be actually different people that are being linked together okay. as, as, as one crime. Wild. I got a tip from somebody, and you're going to, this is, this is just for you, Ron. This, okay. is, a little, this is a little dedication to Ron snippet. from Scott. All right. <laughs> <laughs> This is a friend of mine. I won't name okay. his name. He said, dude, hope you're well. Loving the content on YouTube. Keep it up. Uh, I, I like listen. I like listening to the Scottish ex, the Scotch <laughs> accent. He creeped me out at first, but he's like the perfect guy for what you do. It's all incredible. So listen, you're creepy at first. I, yeah, but listen. When you <laughs> When you fuck with me for a minute, you start to get Good. creepy. I'm glad. I think it, I think it's just like the fact that there's a skull inside the computer, and I've got like a hoodie and it. it's like some. You know, I, I'm hoping that's it. I hope I don't just ooze creepiness. Let's just move on from that. Let's not tug on that thread. Let's not tug on that thread. Let's move forward. Come on, uh, people. Thirty more minutes left of this live. What else you got for me? Throw. I'm. I'm. Look at. I don't even have. Google. Oh, here, here we go. Here we go. Here's a great one. Have you ever met any serial killers that have a vigilante mindset? So they were serial killing for the good of mankind. Ever met anyone like that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're going to be interviewing one here very shortly. Um, I've been talking to a guy. So there was a serial killer by the name of Gerald Schaefer. So real quick, Ron, Google Gerald Schaefer. Pull him up. Gerald Schaefer. Pull him up. Gerald Schaefer, serial killer. Okay. See if you can find him. I'm oh my god! <laughs> you found so you found him, right? Yeah. So his name's Gerald Schaefer Jr. Um, he's a he's an American murderer, suspected serial killer. He used to be, I think, he used to be a cop. Okay, he was convicted of two, suspected of many other murders. Kill. He's suspected of killing thirty women, I think. Wow. So they go down and look, where, look at where he died. He died at the age of forty nine, Florida State Prison. Cause of death, multiple stab wounds. Okay. And then go down to the, where you, you look at the Wikipedia. Um, it'll say imprisonment and death. Look at his death. And it says, um, Vincent Rivera killed Schaefer in an argument over a cup of coffee. Vincent it was Rivera. really over hot water. Vincent Rivera and I are talking. So we are going to interview a serial killer who killed a serial killer. Oh, wow. Pretty interesting. So pretty Chris interesting. Scarver killed Jeffrey Dahmer. Vincent Rivera killed Jero Schaefer. We're interviewing both of those guys. There you go. We're going to have a couple of vigilante serial killers. Damn. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just looking. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm at that flabbergasted moment again. I'm just looking at the murder, uh, the murderpedia on uh, Rive Rivera, Rivera. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And yeah, right there. Suffocation, stabbing, stabbing a prison made, uh, stabbing with a prison made shank. Yes. Damn. Damn. It's just, it's just, it's got just, into his cell, got into a cell and just Killed lights serial. out, lights out. Damn. It's just, I honestly, that, 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 that would happen to many serial killers. Like if BTK ever went into the public, uh, the, the mainstream, um, uh, what the hell is it called? Um, uh, the mainstream prison. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm blanked out, but he would be killed immediately. Yeah. A lot of people just loving the no, show. 
uh, a lot a lot of love in the side chat mate like a lot of positive everything a lot of we're loving ron and phil we're loving the content we're loving this we're all it's all good in on that sense uh oh there's there's the armstrong clan big shout out to you guys how you all doing um uh hang on i said everyone okay i'm just trying to find some more questions here there's a lot I also there's, there's a say lot. again if you're due to if you just jumped on this is a really cool sweatshirt by one of my wife's former students from Missouri, uh, Alexander Durbin. He he creates, uh, he's got an amazing clothing line. He sent me a pair of sweats and a sweatshirt. It's really comfortable, man. I wear it a lot. And um, it's a little cold here in North Carolina, so it's worked out well. AlexanderDurbin.com. And he donates 10% of his uh, proceeds to the Oakland Elizabeth House to uh, abuse women, children. It's a really good cause. Anything like that, I'm all in. So Alexander Durbin, thank you for the sweatshirt, sweatpants. And um, I always cut the strings out. I don't like those, but it's really cool. Oh, and the Beatles stands for resilience because we all need that after 2020. Ron, are you here? You want to see my puppy? Yeah, I want to see your puppy. Dad. She's back. She's the best. Oh, she's going to drink my wine. Go ahead. Go ahead. Put, put her up. Put her up. <laughs> Look at, look right here. Look at this guy. You see this Scottish guy? He's kind of creepy. I'm not kind of creepy. Okay, I'm a lovable <laughs> character. And my son's here. Just give me a minute. You just show off Daisy for a minute. <laughs> All she's now is looking at the, the, the glass of wine. This dog loves food. All she cares about is food. Kind of like my fat ass. We both like food. Right. Oh, she gets a scrambled egg every day. Two scrambled eggs All every right. day. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> My baby, yeah, uh, baby. So Daisy is in the house. She is. She's on fire, on fire this evening. I, I hope. I, I hope. Uh, I hope her plan for world domination um, continues. You know. <laughs> oh man, Thor. Oh Daisy, and she might have flowers on her collar. Which she's a goddamn she's maniac. <laughs> that's that's exactly what Thor was like as a puppy. Like I remember Rachel. The, the house that we lived in we had lamb at florin and she spent most days walking around the house with this like nine week pu old puppy biting on the bottom of her trousers then lying down and slowly being pulled along the house for the entire day <laughs> so so yeah uh okay i'm just checking my, my wife wendy she's so sweet she's like i want a puppy and so <laughs> this is really funny right here's the story of, of daisy so we we've been together seven years we didn't have any pets <clears throat> we just lived alone and we had a really nice, easy lifestyle. And so she started getting to the point where she wants a puppy. And I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to I'm saying, do you really want to, do you have any idea how much it's going to change our life? We can't pick up, jump on an airplane and fly wherever you want. You know, it, it, you're not going to sleep at night and you get to pick up dog do and all this stuff. And she's like, I don't care. I want a dog. Okay. Oh so we called God. the breeder and um, he said he had a, a litter, a puppy, a box. We wanted a boxer. And he said, all the boxers are gone except for one. She's white and she's deaf. And we're like, my wife's like, we have to have it because her son has some hearing loss. So it was kind of neat. And um, I guess who wakes up at 1.30 and takes the puppy out, Ron? Let me just tell you, it's not Wendy. <laughs> it's definitely not Wendy, man. It's a crazy it's world a out there. It takes the puppy out, Ron. Yeah. It's, so, and, then, and then Wendy wonders why I'm sleeping on the couch at 7 p.m. Ron's trying to call me. I'm sleeping at 7 p.m. Yeah, out. well, listen, listen. I, I, don't, I haven't slept for two months. You can't, you can't be expecting lovely Wendy to venture out into the madness. Oh, oh my gosh. It's no, a scary world, it. man. It's a scary world yeah. out there. It's a scary world out there. Okay, so uh, I, I, somebody just asked me to Google a Canadian serial killer named Robert Pink Picton. Right. Yeah, Robert Pickton is the pig guy. He actually killed women and fed them to pigs. He is the proper so Robert, creepy. His, his name's Robert Pickton. I call him the, I don't even know what his nickname is, but oh, he's the pig man. serial killer. Look him up real quick. Yeah. Again, I don't specialize in, in, in serial killers outside of the U.S., but I do, I am familiar with a lot of names. Um, Pickton. Here we go. Robert oh, oh, no, Pickton. I think this was just for creepiness factor, man. This, this guy takes the biscuit. Six to four. Yeah, you, you pulled him up? You found him? Yeah, yeah, he's here. He's here. I've got him up on the screen. Creepy, creepy looking dude. Horrible crimes. Yep. Massive amounts of body. <laughs> pig farmer killer, like I told you. He's the pig farmer killer. What a great nickname. He's still alive right now. So um, we could talk to him. I don't know if he 
he does interviews or not, but he's still alive. So if you're asking that question in Canada, if you will message me, maybe Ron and I will reach out to other countries for once. Maybe I'll interview a Canadian serial killer. Maybe we'll interview a, a UK serial killer. Maybe we'll interview a, a killer in Brazil or something. So um, if you uh, would message me and you want me to talk to the Robert Picton, I will reach out to him. I have a knack at getting people to respond. You're going to reach don't out to Robert I'll Pinkton. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that would be mental. I mean, oh, this guy. Uh, when you talk about what I said, what I said, Ron, is you and I probably should do something I've never really done before. Let's interview a couple serial killers in Canada, yeah. the UK. Let's do it. Maybe Brazil. Where let's, just, let's talk to some people out of the country. Yeah. Like, I've never done that before, but it might be interesting. Because a Absolutely. lot of people are watching from Canada and UK sure. and that kind of thing. Yeah, why not? And I think as well, there's a big difference between a YouTuber uh, contacting serial killers and somebody like yourself. Uh, so, well, I mean, you're kind of a YouTuber it's now. It's all but... about the letter. It's all about the first yeah. letter you send them. You've got you've to gotta know what to say. You, you know, and, and people ask me, can I see your letter? I never let anybody see my letter. But you've got to know what to say. You've got to know how to approach them. You've got to be careful because sometimes it, it's just like you guys, you shoot your shot at a beautiful woman. You only get one shot. Yeah, okay. And if you blow it, you blow it, and that, that's the way it is. Um, you got to you got to take your first shot. It's got to be it's got to be a really good one. Here's another one for you. Just like with Bigfoot, right? There's hot spots, okay, for sightings. Is there pr more prolific parts of America that have more more? Let's not yeah. say more murders. Let's say more people from that place that are convicted serial killers. The top six states in the United States of America to be killed by a serial killer are. <laughs> As follows, California, New York, Texas. Okay, that makes sense. You got LA, yeah. New York City, Dallas. Okay, yeah. those three. Ready for the next three? These aren't as likely. Um, Florida, Florida's crazier in hell. Dude, Too I thought high. Florida would have been higher up the list, if I'm being honest. Uh, Florida, oh, uh, Sh Illinois because of Chicago. Chicago okay. has serial killers all the time. There's serial killers killing right now. There's multiple black females have just been killed like 50 oh, in chicago there's Damn. multiple killers in chicago you ready for number six this is really makes me proud because it's my home state of ohio ohio, ohio. damn all those crazy top six craziness man it's, Shout it's... Out to my to my guys and my people from um the uh the college in virginia who uh, have the serial killer research center um, Radford University, a lot of these stats we get from them. They're doing one hell of a job, Mike and all them over at Radford University. Thank you. I'm just looking for some more questions. If you got any more questions, guys, get them in. I'm sorry if I've missed oh, them. We're, just... down to, we're down to 20, 20 minutes. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah, but a lot of people saying Peter Tobin would be a great one. Uh, another, And also the pig guy. The pig guy and Tobin, I think, are the one. I've never reached out to either of those guys. Yeah. I'm game, man. Let's do it. You and I will make that happen. Yeah, what's your thoughts? Someone's just asked straight out, what's Phil's thoughts on the Zodiac Killer? Mm -hmm. I, think the, I think we kind of know who the Zodiac Killer is. It was the son of a cop or something like that. They kind of know who it is. Is that I who's? Is no, that, wait, no, 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 I'm sorry. Is, is that whose cipher was just decided, I'm, just got cracked? I'm, 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 we're, I'm, um, I'm talking about the son of a cop killed Elizabeth Short. That was yep. a huge case out there. Elizabeth Short. Remember, she was old. It was an older case, and she was sawn in two. It was a crazy crime scene. Have you all ever seen the Elizabeth <laughs> no, Short? No, no. Like, like, right, just... Real quick, before I answer that question, Google Elizabeth Short crime scene. Elizabeth Short, crime scene. All right. She's oh, also called man. The, she's also called the Black Dahlia. I know exactly who this is now, yeah. yeah that, that wow. That is one crazy, crazy. You can all Google that. So we think we know who killed her. It's a, it's a son of a police officer or a doctor. I can't remember what. You can Google that and you can read all that. I don't think we know who the Zodiac killer is, but I'm also going to say I think he's dead. I think he's dead. So I think that case will go unsolved, but... Episode one of my podcast, Where the Bodies Are Buried, season two, coming out in March. We're going to talk a lot about the original Zodiac, and then we're going to talk about Heriberto Seda, who was the Zodiac copycat. And it's going to be an interesting episode. Don't miss my first episode of season two of Where the Bodies Are Buried. I'm so triggered by these crime scene photos. Oh, my God. That's, a, that's one of the worst crime scenes I've ever seen, really. She's a beautiful woman, too. Like, she did not have a nice few last moments. Oh, no. Mm -mm. at all 
Yeah. And then he displayed the body, kind of like yeah. we've been talking about. Yeah. I bought for tonight. He displayed the body for all to see. Can you imagine taking your dog for a walk? And <laughs> some lady, you know who found the body? A yeah. lady pushing her baby in a stroller. Yeah. Let me tell you how this would go I'm down. With in the morning for a morning walk, and she looks. At, imagine looking at that, Ron. Yeah. Going, yeah. your first reaction is what? Well, well, guess what? Our first reaction was what well, yours would be. That's got to be a mannequin. No, right? Phil. Let me tell you how it would go. I I would be here's walking the, along. Here's the meme. Here's the meme. It's <laughs> never a mannequin. It's never a mannequin. Nah, this is how it would go down. Thor would go bounding ahead by about seventy feet in front of me. Pick up her yep. fucking arm. Okay, come running back with it. Thinking this is the best thing in the way. I found an arm. It's amazing. He'd throw it down and he'd run back. And by the time that I've uh, looked at this, he's fucked that whole crime scene. That is just done it, now. Do you know what I mean? Guess what? Guess what? Your DNA is at the crime scene and oh, you're yeah. about to be arrested. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For the yeah. Oh, you murder. Thanks, Thor, you dick. Uh, so, yeah, but that would be horrific. I mean, taking your kid out for a walk, finding that, finding anything like that would be horrific. Uh, yeah. And of course, yeah, it's a mannequin. Of course, the meme would just be that because that's exactly what it is. And yeah, I don't think we'll ever no. truly know. So I don't think I don't think we'll ever know who killed who the Zodiac, Zodiac killer, killer was. He's yeah. gotten away with it. BTK would have gotten away with it if his dumbass would would have stopped contacting police. But I don't think we'll ever solve the Zodiac case. Yeah. So you might as well give up on that one. Well, I think they just cracked the cipher uh, recently. Yeah, yeah, but it, we're not going to find out who it's did it. Still, Some people are thinking it's H.H. H. Holmes. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. H.H. H. 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 Holmes, Holmes is not the Zodiac. H. H. Was that not fucking ages ago, H.H. H. Holmes? Uh, wait, wait. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, they... They're, they're thinking someone is the Zodiac. Yeah, it's um, the guy with the glass. It's the weird guy with the... It's, it's because of the mugshot of the Zodiac killer, right? Oh, um, um, is it... Some people thought it was... I don't remember, man. I don't remember yeah, the dates. Yeah, no, no, look, it's, it's this one. They were trying to make a connection. Is the Zodiac killer this guy? I don't know if it was... Yeah, there's there's, there's, there's been multiple conspiracy theories about the yeah. Zodiac killer, and I'm talking from pol politicians to cops to serial killers to just random criminals. Oh, yeah. People thought H.H. H. Holmes was the, maybe he was the, um, he was the, uh, the original guy that stabbed people. I don't remember. It was back yeah, in the day. H.H. H. 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 Holmes, H.H. H. Holmes, I think, was the original bad boy. Um, 1930s, I think, right? 1920s or something like that. Yeah. I think it was, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. 1861 died 1896. H. James Holmes was known as Henry Howard Holmes was the American serial killer despite his confession 27 murder. Was this the hotel guy? Yeah, that's the hotel guy. Yeah. Oh man. I tell you what, when we get a time machine, right, we're going to talk to him. Because no, <laughs> let me let me who are people saying there are people that think the Zodiac is another serial killer? Yeah. Okay, let me see. The Zodiac murders happen in the 60s and 70s. Uh, originally, they thought it might have been, you know, I don't know. I don't know who they thought it was, but there was a guy they suspected of it. And uh, I don't believe I don't believe any of that. Those theories. I sure. believe the Zodiac got away with that. He, yeah. he died. Well, statistically, um, there's got to be one dumbass serial killer that gets away with it on pure luck, just mathematically. You oh, know, absolutely. Out of them all. Here's another one for you. Question for, question for Phil. Have you ever had an opportunity to speak to Ed Kalinsky? I don't know who that is. Uh, and uh, have you ever helped any of the families? You're talking about Richard Kuklinski? The, I, the, uh, the it I, just says Ed Kuklinski. I'll, I'll Google it and see if uh, anything else comes up. Richard Kuklinski. Yeah, yeah, Richard Kuklinski. Richard, Richard Kuklinski, the ice... Uh, what's he called the ice man oh that name? guy he's a fucking oh, he's a he's, spicy one i mean he's considered a serial killer but he's a hit he's kind of like more of a hitman yeah uh, is he called the, what's his name <laughs> yeah, he's a hitman right that just took things yeah. a little bit further yeah. he was a hitman further. that really enjoyed it um, yeah no i mean he's dead but i never did get to talk to him no. he is what's, it, what's, his name? Ice, what's his nickname the ice man I, ice pick i want to say pick maybe it is ice man uh, ice no, man not, no. Not Ice Pick. Ice Man. Ice it Pick. is Ice Man. Yeah, Ice Man. I think they did. Ice, I think they made a movie. Right? The hit man, a gang, yeah. Like he would be like a gang member. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just not too interested in him, but he is dead now. He's deceased. Ironically, it says occupation hitman and film distributor. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, I used to mess with hitman bank robbers. Yeah. That's interesting. I'm fascinated with old, uh, old mafia people. Like, I, I really am fascinated with Bonnie and Clyde. And um, you know, Babyface Nelson and John Dillinger, those yeah. kind of guys really 
have always fascinated me. And it's an era thing, though. It's the magical yeah. era of no, CC... and... yeah, yeah, no CCTV. Yeah, no CCTV. No mobile phones, no internet. It was that Machine magical world. Damn. I'm going to call remember. myself Machine Gun Phil. I like that name. Oh, he made adult tapes, the the uh, ice porn, porn movies. Yeah, porn, porn movies. Wow. Yeah. All right, guys, 14 minutes. My beautiful wife has dinner for me in 14, not 13 minutes. Yeah. What else um, you got? Give me some really crazy questions. Come, come up on. with something crazy. Come on. Let's, 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 see what, let's, let's see what we got. Next week, the Cleveland Strangler, Anthony Sowell. You're going to want to hear this story. This is the House of Horrors in Cleveland, Ohio. Here's another one for you. Oh, yeah. uh, could we arrange an uh, interview with a female killer? I mean, not necessarily a serial killer, but maybe a female killer. I think just for, I think just cause, uh, if you know what I mean, it would be good to um, to do that. And again, I think- Why don't, it, why don't you guys, uh, uh, yeah, the answer is yes. I have contacted several female serial killers. I haven't really got a lot of response yet. Why don't you put in the in the chat, I'm sorry, in the, in the go to the video and comment on all my videos. Anytime you guys see a video, uh, I do read all the comments. Um, Put on there your questions and also put in there who you'd like to see me talk to next. Uh, and by the way, we get, we get so many positive comments. We always have a couple of haters. I love the haters. I mean, w w what would the world be without a couple of jealous haters, right? I love that. But Boy. so haters stick around. We love hearing from you, but we want to hear from, thanks for all the love you guys are showing and so many nice comments and so many nice, um, you guys are just yeah. great. I, I we're we've doing got, this for you. I hope you guys enjoy it. We've got a, 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 another uh, random name here. Russell Williams. Uh, apparently, he's a British-born killer. And again, no one's, I don't think anyone's expecting you to know who it is. Um, yeah, I don't know the, as many killers outside the country. Russell Williams, yeah, I've never heard yeah, of. Yeah, he's, 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 from, he's from Britain? Uh, no, I think, he's, I think he's Canadian, but I think it was a military, military is that crimes. that dressed up like a woman? And, I um, think it is, he's yeah. He's weird dude. That, if, if I did send him a letter even though he's from Canada, because I want to talk to him. Yeah. Uh, look him up real quick, Ron. He's got a name like General something. Let's look him up real quick. <laughs> All that's they coming up so is pictures of him in women's underwear. <laughs> I told you. I told you. And I ironically, you. a picture of a woman who looks exactly like my mate Mac's wife. <laughs> I told you. I'm telling you. Oh, shit. I think she oh. might be one of the victims. Oh, my God. That's like... Russell Williams. Max yeah. misses his long-lost sister. That's wild. Yeah. yeah okay yeah it's just literally just oh man russell williams vic oh yeah, yeah he was wow crazy, he did not respond to me i've sent him a letter i mean i could try again but he just did not respond to me oh uh, i don't think he'll respond to anyone if he knows all these pictures are on the internet of him <laughs> he's like, like uh, this... uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stay silent I just, I just, I don't understand how he's got a series of photos where he's in the same i, I need to show you this is it is there anything here that's going to get us back? If I'm, not, I'm not going to do it, right? But it's like... Is it... Let me say something, Ron, too. There, there are some serial killers that never respond. Like, so don't ever ask me to interview Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer. Don't ever, don't ever ask me to interview Ed Kemper. Um, Ed Kemper, the co-ed killer. Those guys do not do interviews. They do not respond. Um, don't ever ask me to talk to the Claremont Killer out in California. Killed a bunch of women. Um, don't ever ask me to talk to the Taco Bell Strangler in Charlotte. He doesn't do interviews. So there's a lot of guys out there that just won't talk. Would and, you uh, be interested in throwing together a little investigation theory on the Long Island killer? Yeah, I mean, I, th I, I think that's a truck driver serial killer. Listen, John Williams basically said he knows who killed John Williams, the big killer. I'm just killer. saying, so I, think, I think, I think, we I think you and me, right, between us, I'll do the edit and you, I'll do some research, you do some research. I think we could put together an hour long, like. Let's do it. Proper true crime deep dive and a whole new concept of theory, which is like, this is. Uh, this is our theory on, a, on an ongoing yeah. investigation rather than it be. I think that's exciting. I'll write some stuff up. There's a Facebook page if y'all want to go to. It's called Lisk, the Long Island Serial Killer. And they have a Facebook page. And y'all can, if you're like, or you're, say like, what is Ron talking about? Go check that Facebook page out. And um, if we do something like this, you can tell the page, hey, man, we're, we're doing something. I, on I this need case. to get you to answer this. Poor uh, Elizabeth has asked us about 50 times. Uh, yeah, let's go. Where did you first start your career? And was his beginning position? Hang on a second. Where did you first start your career? 
and what was his beginning position to where he is. Okay. Yeah, what was your journey, basically? Where did you start and what was your journey, quickly? Elizabeth, I'm sorry you had to ask your question 50 times. It's not my fault. It's all Ron. So if you're, you want to write a hateful me, comment, me, 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 me. But Elizabeth, here's the deal. I had no idea what I'd be doing today. I did not start saying, I want to become a profiler, interviewing serial killers, training police officers. I never said that. Um, I grew up in, uh, in the inner city of Cleveland. I did not come from a leave it to beaver type family. My dad was an alcoholic growing up and I just started working with troubled kids. When I turned 20, I went to college for a couple of years. I decided college wasn't for me. I started working with rapists and teen killers and teen rapists. Now, that led to me doing school assemblies, trying to help other students and kids. And that, that led to a national speaking group that led to interviewing teen killers and school shooters. I progressed to serial killers and mass murderers. And now here I am. Um, people ask me, how, do, how did you get here? Ron, it's almost like how serial killers are arrested by luck. Well, I fell cool. into this. Well, that's it. And I think uh... I didn't plan on this. I didn't plan to do this. And this is not what I set out to do. Yeah. I did. You know, I, I listen, when I was in college, I wanted to be an accountant. I took my first accounting job as a intern and I hated it. And I was like, this is not for me. Yeah. Now I do some business. Like, like I've been a real estate agent for some time and, and I may be doing that again, but this has always been my passion. Stopping teen murder, saving innocent lives, saving children. It's always been my passion. I am not a true crime fan. People say, who's your favorite serial killer? I don't have a favorite serial killer. <laughs> so I mean, random. Fucking killers. <laughs> That's so random. They kill people. They kill children. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a favorite. This is not a fucking <laughs> basketball player. But I, um, I, have in, I have cases that I think are the most interesting. Yeah. For sure. Do you know, I, I, do you know how those cases. it's funny because I can guarantee you every time that said to you is through excitement and naivety of what they're saying. Do you know uh, what I mean? Because every, being, they're, they're not being, every they're not being. other conversation they've ever had about serial killers has been with people that are obsessed with them, not people who are working to fucking shut them down no, and no, track no. them. Do you know what I mean? No, uh, I, mean I, I, you know, I remember all these pages, right? Like, so I, I it's nonstop sharing of memes Jeffrey Dahmer, it's about him eating people and they got all these memes, you know, uh, do what do you want for dinner? I don't know. Jeffrey's in the fridge. I don't know. Whatever these fucking memes are. I, I don't share any of those kind of things. I don't think it's funny no. or entertaining no. that they kill people. Um, I am interested in it though. And uh, so I guess I'm interested in true crime like you all are. I'm just not a fan. We've, I don't uh, have my favorite killer and I don't wear their t-shirt around town. I don't do any of that kind of stuff. Uh, spa Spawny there's is a reason why we all do what we do, so... Yeah, Spawny, who's one of our regulars, he's a bit of a, bit of a dark hearted, dark horse, this one, uh, <laughs> has asked, uh, have you ever watched Ron's Hurtcore documentary? And if not, would you uh, watch it and react to it? I definitely suggest you don't do that at all, okay? <laughs> that will definitely not want, don't be like, oh, Wendy. We're going to sit down and watch one of Ron's documentaries this weekend. It's going to be great. Fuck up your whole weekend. <laughs> And I'm glad Ron's not busting my balls over this because I would ask Ron, have you read any of my books? And he would say, no, we, we, uh, we're recently been together here only like yeah. three weeks and, uh, we're just getting to know each other and I have not seen his documentary. He has not read yeah, my books. No, don't, don't watch it. But I'm no, don't watch it. <laughs> don't watch it. Like, no, don't watch it, man. I will watch no. it. No one send them uh, the link, okay? Okay? I will happily read your books. So that'll be fine. But now nah, that'll ruin yeah. your whole fucking weekend, mate. Uh, like, I, I, try. I, I, let's see how far you get through it. Okay? That's probably the best way. We, we got five more minutes for yeah. you. Before we start to, like, say goodbye. Let me just sure. share one piece here. Okay, go. Today. Can you imagine it's Christmas time? And you open up this gift mom and dad bought you. It's called the Serial Killer Trivia Game. Oh, welcome to 2021, people. We are in the era of just wow. You can, play, you can play a serial killer game. And the game, this is crazy. Like I got this off. I don't know where I got this, but it's... Are the, this families, is a, of the, are the families of the serial killers on that box not still alive? Oh, my God. The families are, are probably so upset. Look at the, oh here's God, the interior. The fuck? And they have little pieces that have you know like the like gacy and stuff on it here's the rule book gacy's on 
<laughs> this had to be yeah. a, this had to be a GoFundMe. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. So um, this was actually marketed. It, it took a lot of heat, man. People got really upset about this game, but it sold very well. It's kind of a collector item now, dude. See if you just took away all the real serial killers. No one would have given a fuck, right? If it was just the serial killer game where you got to be a serial killer, do you know right, what I mean? Right, but the fact that right. it's real killers, that's where that's where the marketing team was obviously taking some good shit that day, if you know what I'm saying. Well, you know what, though? When you do this, um, you know, it's, it's controversial and people are yeah. protesting. It sells more. And it's that's a cult classic. It's a cult classic from that point on, right? The serial killer trivia game Oh, so it's um <laughs> fucking L Spawny. Oh, it's eight eighteen plus. <laughs> it takes you about an hour to play it, and it's for two to five okay. people. Okay, I tell you what, you get us to five thousand subscribers, and we'll play the serial killer game live for a members only stream one night. Okay, Spawny. Oh. So there you go. All right. There you go. <laughs> there you and go. We're we're, uh, we're rolling right now. We're uh, we're almost. What are yeah. we at? Like five five thousand so. subscribers. I'll put together a members night where we sit and do uh, a, a full game. I will even get some of you guys on, like however many people can play, and then we will never ever upload it as a live stream ever. <laughs> we'll just take it off the internet and just that'll be fun. I'll tell you another thing, Ron. If we get to ten thousand subscribers, yep. which we will, I'm going to do a big giveaway. I'm going to give away a lot of shit. So okay, we'll do. Really special for that. Okay. Well, I tell you what, big giveaway. I might even sacrifice the hair on the front right shin of mine for a for a live wax strip of a Scottish man. If that is also some incentive for you, okay. Giveaway, waxing, board games, deaf dogs. Damn. We got all of them. And wait, hey, listen, man, it's, uh, we're, we're about ready to end this. I want to thank you for being on. And next week, same time, same, place. same sandbox. Yeah. We're talking about the Cleveland Strangler. Listen, man, this guy killed 11 women or more in his neighborhood. When they arrest, when they busted in his house, he had naked, decapitated corpses laying all through the house. It was a house of horrors in Cleveland, Ohio. Damn. I grew up very close to that house. Damn. It's a very important case to me. Well, hey, well, listen. Uh, well, died last week. We've talked many times on the phone, but he died last week. We'll be talking about him next week. It'll be a fascinating case, and I'll have lots of photos Exciting. for you. Okay, well, listen. Thank you, Phil. Thank you to all of you guys. Thank you to the, the Wolf Gang, the SL fam, all of you guys. And uh, we'll see you all next week. And don't get, like I say, there's new content coming uh, tomorrow, and there'll be new content almost daily all this week. So make sure you're subscribed to the Phil's channel. Make sure you're subscribed to Surviving Life. And I will catch you all this week. I'll be on Discord. It's always great to catch up with you guys. And Phil, you have a lovely night. I uh, hope you yep. and Wendy have yeah, a good and, night. And Ron's, Ron's posting tomorrow uh, yeah. the, uh, uh, what the hell, uh, help me out, his name. Terry, uh, Terry Blair. Terry Blair case. And just so you know, Terry Blair just sent me a message and said, I've killed, I have six unsolved cases. We'll talk. So that'll be, listen to that interview tomorrow and then know in your mind. Yeah. Phil get six Damn. unsolved cases from that guy. Yeah, well, that's what we're working on. Listen, Phil, you're a legend. Everyone in the I side appreciate chat, you're all you. legends. We'll see you all Love in the next all, one. Guys. Love you all. Take Peace. care. I, I, I forgot to put outro music, right? So the show is ending. Scoop the pow pow.